Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, uh, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all have had a wonderful week. I hope everybody's getting geared up for the summertime, getting outside more, walking our dogs, taking our kids to the park, or going to the beach or a lake or something. I'm excited, I'm ready for it to be summertime. I love it when my little one is not in school and he gets to spend a lot more time aggravating me. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about a highly requested case. Now this one, it gets me in a couple ways. One of the ways that it gets me is because the person that we're gonna be talking about here looks so much like a girl that I was in a program with when I was about 14 years old. She kind of acts like her just from the little video clips and stuff that we see online, which I'll show you guys those later in the video, but she looks like her and man, she reminds me of her. I'm not gonna say her name just in case she sees this and I'm sure she has moved on from that time when we were young teenagers in that facility. I'm sure she's doing great now, but man, she reminds me so much of her. And the other reason why this video gets me is because, well, you're gonna have to wait to the end to see. There's some twists and turns in this one. So let's just start at the beginning. Isabella Guzman was born in June of 1995. Isabella was born to her mother, Young Mihoy, and her father, Robert Guzman. Isabella was born in Aurora, Colorado, and she was an only child. Isabella grew up in a Mormon home. So her parents practiced the Mormon religion and she just grew up knowing the Mormon religion as well. Isabella's mother and father would get a divorce when she was just four years old and her mother would go on later to remarry another man. It is said that Isabella began to have behavioral issues at a young age and because of this Isabella's mother sent her to live with her father at around seven years old so he could straighten her out or figure out what was going on with her. I wish there was more information about about this young age, you know, behavioral issues, because it just kind of makes me wonder what kind of behavioral issues were there. And although eventually Isabella did move back to live with her mom and her stepfather, she continued to struggle throughout her teenage years. She actually claimed to have left the Mormon religion when she was 14 years old, which caused even more attention in the family. And her behavioral problems were happening at school as well. And she got into a lot of fights with her classmates and eventually dropped out of high school during her senior year. Now, as a teenager, it was said that Isabella was seen by the neighbors having boys hopping the fence and sneaking in. And again, this is a rebellious thing, but I I can see this, you know, I can see this being a rebellious teenager. I can see this being something that I might have done or, you know, been involved into, you know, sneaking in, people sneaking out, you know, da, 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 all of that stuff. And so at this point, you still don't, I still can't figure out if Isabella is just being a rebellious teen or if there's something more sinister bubbling underneath. In August of 2013, when Isabella was 18 years old, the relationship between her and her mother began to deteriorate quickly. According to Isabella's stepfather, she started becoming very threatening towards her mother. She was pushing up on her, trying to boss her around, and just all right, actually scaring her mother. Now she's 18 years old at this point. She's an adult legally. She's grown bigger and more aggressive and her mom was scared of her. Her stepfather would also say that Isabella's mother was drained and exhausted with trying to deal with her. Cause again, now at this point, Isabella's mother is saying that she was having issues with her as young as seven years old. Now she's 18 years old, getting aggressive with her mom, pushing up on her, and she was just exhausted. Then on August 27th, of 2013, Isabella and her mother got in a more heated argument than was usual between them. It got so bad that Isabella got right up in her mom's face, 
hawked a big spit in her mouth and spit right on her mother. I mean, this was awful. Her mom is like freaking out. It seems to be escalating between her and her daughter now, and she really just did not know what to do. Nevertheless, she went to bed that night, she woke up, and Yun went to work. When she went to work the next day, she ended up getting an email from Isabella that said three simple words, you will pay. This terrified Yun. She was already scared of her daughter and this seemed like a threat. She was so uneasy about this email, she called the police. Now the police came out to the house, they talked to Isabella and they let Isabella know that her mother could kick her out at any time. They said, you are an adult, you do not have to live here. The disrespect has got to stop or your mom can make you get right out of the house. Isabella seemed to calm down after talking to the police, but Yun was still uneasy about the situation. So she ended up calling Robert, Isabella's biological father and asking him to please come over and have a talk with her. And he did, he came over, he took her outside. They sat down, they had a heart to heart. He was talking to his daughter and it was said that it seemed like as Isabella calmed down, she understood and that she was not seemingly going to mistreat her mother anymore. Robert would later go on to say that after that conversation with his daughter, he felt that he had gotten through to her and that there wasn't gonna be any more trouble, but boy, was he wrong. The next day on August 28th of 2013, Yun, Isabella's mother, arrived home from work at around 9.30 p.m. She was exhausted and tired from working all day. She came in, she greeted her husband, Ryan. She told him she'd had a long day and that she needed to go upstairs and take a shower. This was a routine for Yun. Come home, take her clothes off, take a shower, come out, eat something and relax. Ryan said, okay. She went upstairs to take a shower. Not long after after Yun went upstairs to take a shower, Ryan was downstairs eating dinner and this is when he started to hear some strange noises. He was hearing like these thud sounds, like a banging noise, and then he heard a blood curdling scream. He jumped up and rushed to go and find Yun to find out what was going on. He thought maybe she had slipped and fell or something like that, and he went to go and see if she was okay. Ryan rushed upstairs, he headed towards the shower, and this is when he saw Isabella slam the door shut. The same bathroom that her mother went into to take a shower. His stomach had to have dropped, y'all. We know everything else that's already happened, the threatening emails, Yun feeling uneasy, her calling the police, all of that. Then she comes home from work, she goes upstairs to take a shower, he hears thuds, banging, a blood curdling scream. He rushes upstairs and he sees Isabella slam the door. He tried very hard to open it. He was trying to open the handle. He was banging on it. Isabella, let me in, let me in. But she had already locked the door and she was pushing on the other side so he could not get in. As he was pushing, trying to get in to save his wife, this is when he saw blood seeping from under the door. Imagine, imagine you guys. Oh my goodness, this is when he stopped pushing on the door and he ran downstairs and he called 911. After he called 911, he ran back upstairs and this is when he heard his wife Yun say, Jehovah. Then Isabella opened the door. She was carrying a knife. The knife was pointed down and dripping blood on it. And she walked out of the bathroom like nothing and she didn't say a word. She just walks out with the bloody knife, staring straight ahead. He rushed into the bathroom and rushed by his wife's side, who was laying on the floor, naked and covered in blood. He desperately, in a panic, tried to resuscitate her, but he couldn't. She had stab wounds all over her body. There was a baseball bat laying next to her, and I mean, there was just blood everywhere. When the paramedics and the investigators arrived 11 minutes later, which is a long time when you are in an emergency like this. Now, I don't know what they were handling before that. They could have been in another emergency where they were saving lives. So I'm not saying anything against them, but just saying 11 minutes is so long when you are in a situation, any kind of desperate situation, but especially when you're looking at your loved one laying on the floor like that. After the investigators came, it was found out that not only was Yun's throat slashed, 
but she had been stabbed 79 times. She had injuries to her head, her neck, and her torso. This was obviously a brutal, brutal slaying. When the cops were able to talk to Ryan and find out really what all he said had happened, and he was like obviously upset, in a panic, and in shock, this is when they began to look for Isabella, but she fled the scene. So now they're on the hunt for her because she was not in the house and she was nowhere on the property. The cops then launched a manhunt where they deemed Isabella armed and dangerous. The cops would later find Isabella because they received a tip that there was a body inside of a car. And so they went there to investigate in a parking garage that was just less than a mile from Isabella's house. When the officers arrived, they found a car, but no body inside of it. They did, however, find items that led them to believe that they were related to the murder. Eventually, officers did find Isabella leaving the parking garage. She was still wearing the same pink sports bra and turquoise shorts that she was reported to have been wearing earlier and they were definitely covered in blood. Isabella was arrested and taken into custody. Now this is when things get a little more strange. On the day of her arraignment hearing on September 5th, Isabella had to be dragged out of her cell. And when she finally got to the courtroom, she made a series of bizarre faces at the camera, smirking and pointing at her eyes. Now this may seem strange to some of us and that this part actually ended up going viral on TikTok, but we'll talk about that more at the end. But Isabella, while she was in custody, ended up going under a bunch of different psychological evaluations. And this is when she pled not guilty by reason of insanity. Now, typically we all smirk at this, except for in a certain cases, I mean, I can think of less than five cases off the top of my head right now. I probably can think of three only, honestly, where I have felt like from an outsider, I mean, a nobody, right? Where I have felt like, yeah, there probably was some sort of like insanity going on there where the person may not have necessarily known what they were doing when they, but, but people plead these cases all the time. We know that. However, in this case, it was odd because not only did the defense say, yep, she needs to plead not guilty by reason of insanity. The professionals said that that was an appropriate plea, but also the prosecution. The prosecution agreed that she should be pleading not guilty by reason of insanity. A doctor later testified that Isabella was suffering from schizophrenia and had experienced delusions for years that worsened the month leading up to the actual murder of her mother. He said that she didn't even realize she was stabbing her mother and that she thought that she had killed a woman named Cecilia in order to save the world. The district attorney made a statement at the time saying, we punish people who make decisions to do wrong when they knew better and they could have done something differently. And in this particular case, I am convinced that this woman did not know right from wrong and she could not have acted differently than she did. Now, mind you, that is the district attorney pleading her case basically and saying like, look, she has schizophrenia, she didn't know. So the judge accepted the plea which all of this is, you know, there's so much that we don't know as far as her medical records, but it makes you wonder. And if you guys watched this video right here about the boy in Florida that ate the couple's face off, we know that schizophrenia really starts to show itself at around this age. And so it very well could have been exactly what the courts are saying that it was. The judge again accepted Isabella's plea and sent her to Colorado Mental Health Institute where he ordered her to stay there until she was no longer a danger to herself or her community. Even though Isabella got sent off to this Colorado mental institution, I do wanna say that 
a lot of the times the mental institutions are way worse than prison. Okay, so again, sometimes people think that they're going to get to go to these facilities. It's going to be better. No, especially if you don't have a severe mental illness. If you do, yes, they're going to be better. But if you're faking it and you go there, oh my gosh, I can't imagine how horrifying it would be if you are in your right mind. Now, with all this being said, what Isabella didn't know was that she was about to go viral on TikTok. And boy, did she go viral on TikTok. In 2020, several TikTok users began posting videos from Isabella's 2013 arraignment. Some had the song, sweet but psycho playing and others showed creators attempting to imitate Isabella's strange facial expressions from the courtroom. This is when Isabella quickly gained a fan base. Commentators were saying things like how beautiful she was and how she must have had a good reason for ending her mother's life. And one video compilation of her court hearing gained 2 million views and people even made fan pages in Isabella's honor on Facebook and Instagram. Meanwhile, while everybody's doing this, Isabella's in treatment, trying to get the psychological and psychiatric help that she needs and, and finding the medication so she can live in, 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 I guess, like a reality and not in a delusional world that the schizophrenia causes. And I just can't imagine schizophrenia, and I've studied this a lot, and I have no, I have been in prison with people that have had it. There's, I have old videos. I have been locked in a confinement cell with a woman who had it. And it ain't, it ain't a fashion statement by no means. And it can be very scary for other people around and, and even the person that is dealing with the delusions and the audible voices. But here's TikTok seeing a video of a pretty girl who's got, who's having issues and making faces at a camera and making her some sort of like idol or something. Then get this. In November of 2020, Isabella petitioned the court for her release, claiming, I'm better. Nothing's wrong with me. I've got it all figured out now, and now I'm ready to go. In an interview that Isabella did with the media, she said, I was not myself when I did that, and I have since been restored to full health. I'm not mentally ill anymore, and I'm not a danger to myself or others. Myself when I did that, and I have since been restored to full health. I'm not mentally ill anymore. I'm not a danger to myself or others. If I could change it, or if I could take it back, I would. Isabella said that she allegedly suffered years of abuse from her mother. I was abused at home by my family for many years. My parents are Jehovah's Witnesses. And um, I left the religion when I was 14. And the abuse at home worsened after I quit. And Isabella also made it a point to show the scars that she gained from committing this crime against her mother. The fight with my mom was terrible and um, I was injured in the process. I have the scars on my hands. Um, I don't know if you can see or not. She also alleged that back in 2015, she had reported to the police that she was SA'd by a hospital employee in a closet. She said, he asked me if I wanted to go in there and look through to get some clothing, so I did. The other patient left and he went in there and shut the door behind him. The case was investigated by the hospital's police. The Colorado Department of Human Services denied to release any information about it, basically saying that it was, you know, they couldn't, they couldn't release that type of information. But Isabella said that there were two other incidents with the same employee, and she said that she was afraid that if she didn't do what he wanted, that he could ruin her life. Now, I don't know what happened with Isabella in the mental institution with this person, but what I can tell you is, as somebody that has been in multiple different lockup facilities, as a youth, as an adult, I can tell you that this type of thing happens, and it happens a lot, and it's terrible. And I can't imagine what happens in these mental institutions where you could have people that are not there working there for the right reasons, thinking that they can do things to these patients and that they're not going to remember, they're not going to recall, and they're definitely not going to bring a case against them because they're not all the way in their right mind. It's terrifying to think about, but it doesn't surprise me at all because I know it happens. And I even seen it happening when I was in juvenile facilities where we were all underage and the adults were all very much adults. And that is just, especially looking back as an adult now, 
horrifying. In June of 2021, Isabella was granted permission to leave the hospital for therapy sessions, but was required to wear a GPS tracking device. And despite her alleged use of relationship with her mother, she said that if she could go back and change the situation, she would. I don't know the situation with her mom. Again, I, so it's hard for me to comment on that. And I don't truly know what was going on with her mental health. But I do hope that if she is getting the treatment that she needs. And if she gets out, she stays taking the medication that she needs to take. Because something that does happen is sometimes people, not all of them, sometimes people get into treatment and they get on their medication and they're like, I feel great. I'm back to normal, I feel good. Because of that, they think, well, I don't need my medicine anymore. Because they're feeling good, they stop taking the medicine. That medicine is built up in your system. It stays in there for a bit, and then you're off to the races again when it wears off. And in a lot of these types of medicines, it's not the type of thing you can just take and you're instantly back in that headspace. It has to build up. And so people get in trouble that way. And I do hope that if she gets out, she is very much monitored because schizophrenia like man that's not nothing to play with so have y'all heard about this do you think it's strange that Isabella says she did what she did because her mom was abusive to her but also when the situation happened she said that she was actually killing a woman named Cecilia and she was doing it in order to save the world or maybe she doesn't really know why she did it who knows? You guys let me know what y'all think in the comment section down below. Other than that, I love you guys. Thank y'all so much for being here. And I hope y'all have a wonderful weekend. See y'all in the next video. Bye.